I decided to do weekly updates for my blood sum project. This week we will still be focused on WAF world building. As a rule of thumb there are two ways to go about it. You either design the world from the top down, starting with the rough outline and then going into more and more detail, or you start from the bottom up, start generating your first NPC, your first village, and your first kingdom. If you are going to run just a one shot or a short series of adventures in a very limited environment and your world will not be too different from your standard fantasy world or science fiction world for that matter, you can get away with just designing the places where your adventure will start at. Because uh, that what the players will actually see and maybe a few rumors about the surrounding areas all you need at the beginning and then you can make up the rest of the world as it comes up. But for this project I've decided to go on a top-down approach and first design my general outline and then go into more and more detail as needed and at some prime point there will probably uh, be a jump and they will only go into the small minute detail for the places that my uh, players are actually going to visit. So this week I've updated the general unsorted ideas Um, just some things that came up during research, like I won't have half orcs, instead, I will have humans take the half orc place, being the biggest, strongest race the players can be. Um, there will only be one dragon left in the world, the last dragon, and he will be uh, probably a gold dragon emperor of the largest nation in the world. It won't be uh, all roses and daisies and stuff, but I think I can work with those and some more random ideas. Just don't forget them. Maybe I can work it in later. I've done very little work on the rules, made my design goals. think this is important to set up at the beginning of the project so you don't lose focus on what you're trying to achieve. My rules should be fast and fun. This is one of the reasons I'm going for a D&D style rule set because it's one of the more efficient rule sets I know. And I want simplicity and elegance more than realism or balance for that matter. And the rules are more like regulations. It's more like the pirate code than an actual letter of law. I did these design goals for my world building as well. First I need to produce enough rough information to be able to play Blood Sun with my friends. And I want as a designer some internal consistency and logic, no matter if it's a fantasy setting. And it will be a fairly dark setting, it's, it's post-apocalypse after all. There will be no clear lines between good and evil. So uh, I will definitely not use alignments. There are conflicting goals and ideolo ideologies, not necessarily an age-old struggle between good and evil. This is not Lord of the Rings. In my world there will be no more gods. They will have been gone. And they were always more like Greek gods to begin with, so they were using the mortals like chess pieces on their game board. I want my GM information to be short, precise and in keywords, 
Well, so that way I can write it down very fast and it will be easy to use. But when I've done that, I will try to come up with player information and that will be in the form of in-universe texts. Some stories written down by a, a questionable individual and especially old history will be in the form of legend and myth and there will be contradicting versions of these stories so the players kind of have to decide what they believe what their characters believe actually happened and you can come up with this for each group of players for each gaming table separately and have your own version of the game and I will try to encourage my players, and viewers for that matter, to write these texts so um, I can just edit and catalog them and don't have to write everything myself. I'm going with a top-down approach. So I started designing the solar system. I did some research and made some calculations and I named all of the important planets and moons and this gives me an idea what the night sky will look like, what the calendar will be like, for example one day will be 72 hours, which is very different from Earth. And uh, the gas giant will be 24 times as large as Earth, Moon, and the sky of uh, the Blood Sun world. And the Blood Sun world will be the moon called Thandor. So I came up with the orbital data for that one. Now, I have no real process to coming up with these names. I think they are not bad and I Google to make sure there's nothing major out there that already got this name. So when these names came back it was like a World of Warcraft character, a minor World of Warcraft character or, or magic card or something. So uh, I think I'm pretty clear on that side. And with that information, I went ahead and designed my world. There's a really good website with like random generators called Donjon. And there I used their fractal generation tool to generate this world. And this world has, compared to Earth, very little water on it. There's like only 30% of the planet's surface is covered in water. And then I went ahead and I used Krita to edit this. So um, these inner continent seas I made salt plates because this moon will be tidally locked with the gas giant, meaning one side is always facing the gas giant and will be heated up by said gas giant. So it will be a really hot dry side and this is where I will have all of my Mad Max style adventures take place. The rest of the world will be a bit more civilized and they will send like expeditions into the waste because that is where all the great remnants and artifacts of the age of the gods are still buried under the sand. So we have lots of ruins for adventures to explore. We've got lots of room for bandits and pirates and daring do in these parts. And I also made the world a lot more mountainous because a moon around a gas giant would be very tectonically active. It would have high and sharp mountain ridges that are pretty young, pretty numerous and not yet washed down by erosion. And for the cold side of the moon this will seriously limit the places where you can actually farm food. This 
won't be a nice and forgiving world for the most part. This will be a real hellhole. I also started on the history of the world and the world description of the world sun Thundor with its calendar brief history gods made the worlds brought in the mortals and used them as game pieces then there was war the gods left now the mortals are on their own and I also started working on the races none of this is mechanics yet this is all uh, just general description like I've got the Aryans which is a kind of flying harpy like race basically bird people I've got dwarves and my dwarves are like mixed blood with dragons and the older they get the more aspects of the dragon manifest themselves and then at around 100 years they commit ritual suicide not sure why and I probably won't really put that in the player text as anything definitive why they would be doing this or if all the dwarves are doing this at all and uh, reveal it as the plot points sometime later. I've got some variants here. Uh, different dragon variants for different dwarf variants. I'm very unsure about this yet because there are a lot of dragon variants in D&D and I don't know which one would be really the best choice and how many I actually need. Four might be a bit excessive. I don't have four sub races or any of the other races. Not sure I need elves, but in case I will work them out, there will be sun elves and moon elves. I've got uh, my cat people, I call them Thandorians, and they are the native people of the moon Thandor. And they could take the place of the elves, so be a bit smaller than humans and a bit more agile. Then I've got humans, and they were like brought in from high gravity worlds, so compared to Thandor, Earth would be high gravity, so they are big and strong, and they reproduce fast. They have usually two children, and they were like bred for war, but you would still recognize them as humans. And I've got my goblins, not a lot of text yet, but I'm pretty happy with the idea and will go ahead with this. The goblins uh, are not native to Thunder either, and they're actually a half-breed of halflings and goblins, bred by the gods to have an uh, expendable workforce. And that leads to uh, goblins being the most enslaved race on Thundor, but uh, probably the most mechanically inclined race. Yeah. So, I'd be very glad if you'd leave a comment Tell me what you think. You can have a look at all of these files in uh, the Google Drive folder. You can join the Discord, leave a comment there. And uh, watch how this series will progress and maybe play a game of Bloodstone sometime in the future. That's it for today.